today. Um, a little recap of Indiana. You know, as I said on Saturday, it's great to, to get back on, on track uh, and, and having our efforts rewarded with a win. Um, it was a long three, three game uh, slide for us. Um, but I thought our players continued to, to work themselves out of it. Um, you know, after watching the tape, you know, I thought all three phases did some things uh, that contributed to the win. You know, you think about us on offense and uh, the explosive plays and the passing game returned, and we had some guys really step up, like the Carlos Carrier, like a, a Marcus Fleming. Um, defensively, you know, I thought they did a really good job when they needed to play good defense. You know, during that second quarter when we were struggling on offense, our defense had some good, some big time stops. You know, with the block punt, uh, they held them to a missed field goal. They really did a good job. And then special teams, you know, had some plays that hurt us, but really came through in the clutch with the 41 yard field goal by, you know, our, our kicker there, uh, as well as, you know, our hands team coming in to help seal the victory. So um, it's always good when you have issues and things that come up in the game when you can correct them with the win. And so it was obviously good to do that. Uh, we're sitting at five and three. Um, we're back to neutral, obviously, with a, a great opportunity to play a, a, a regional rivalry, uh, a team that's right right up the road from us that focuses a quite bit of their efforts in recruiting here in our home state. Um, uh, we welcome them here to the shell. We're hopeful that you know we get our fans in the seats and not their fans. I know their fans will do all they can to be in the in the shell and, and support their team, but I'm hoping we can do our part to keep them out of here. You know, Penn State is a, def a strong team. Uh, defensively, I think they've got like the number eight scoring defense in the country. Uh, Sean Clifford, even though he's been a little banged up the last couple of games, has, uh, has shown great improvement and really has done a great job of leading their offense. And they've got all types of weapons there on offense with uh, Jahan Dotson, uh, who I know from having recruited him uh, back in the day. They've got quite a few weapons. Both tight ends are really good players. Uh, the Parker kid in the slot is a big time weapon, as well as the three running backs, Noah Kane and Kebron uh, Lee, um, all have done some great things to contribute offensively. Um, they do a lot that win games. Um, they're positive in their turnover ratio. They lead the Big Ten in red zone defense. So we'll have a great challenge uh, with a good team. But you know what, when you play in the Big Ten, especially here in the Big Ten East, we expect those type of challenges. And for us, uh, we've got to put a great week of work together, uh, go out and bring the energy and effort that it takes to play to our standard and hopefully find a way to get a win. Um, I think it'll be a great opportunity for our fans to come back here to the Shell uh, and, and, and see a great opportunity, a great game for, for, our, for our university. Um, our captains for this week are Army Finau, Talia Tungabailoa, as well as uh, Jalen Duncan, will serve as our game time uh, game captains for this week. And with that, I'll open up to questions. Viner Four Gates makes your company work. Make your company work with hybrid solutions from Microsoft and Nextiva. Yeah, question. Your hands up, we'll get you. Um, microphone, we'll start with Dave. Mike, you talked a little bit about Penn State's defense. Uh, what sort of challenge do you feel they'll provide to lead the offense this week? What kind of things do they do to put teams off balance? They've had a, a run of bad luck, but they're definitely formidable, form, uh, formidable on that side. They're definitely formidable. I mean, they have the number eight scoring defense in the country. So I would venture to say that, you know, if you look at the games they've played, uh, their defense has contributed to keeping things to uh, manageable with giving them opportunities to win. You know, I think the strength of their defense is their front seven. Um, the four guys up front, they've been aided by a couple of transfer players that have come in and added some. They moved number 40 from linebacker to DN, and he uh, has, has been a force, uh, really strong and twitchy athletic guys in the front four. And then they've got linebackers on the second level that are really athletic, big guys. So to me, the front seven, it starts with them probably trying to establish a way to stop the run. Uh, for us, our challenge would be for us to establish the run and, and uh, we're, we're, we're working diligently to get that back to where we create a little more balance in our offense. And uh, But I think their front seven definitely has been a strength for them and not that the back end isn't uh, as formidable as well, but uh, they definitely have done a great job up front and they look 
good job of keeping you out of the end zone. Um, Coach, opportunity to get to six wins this week and bowl eligibility, is that something that's discussed, I guess, amongst the team and what kind of a benchmark would that be, I guess, in your, in your third season? Yeah, it is now. Um, it's not something we would talk about before, but because we are at five and this is the next game, uh, there's a couple of things that are at stake. You know, an opportunity to have the best possible record playing here at the Shell. That's something going into the season. We've got to make this place a place that's hard for opponents to come in and play. And that's where we've continued to ask our fans to continue to come out and support us as we work through the growth phases of building this thing. Um, you know, obviously, six is the magic number to become bowl eligible. We all know it. Um, because we now have five, we can talk about six. Uh, but again, it's the next game mentality. We continue to talk about the opponent being faceless and nameless and that, you know, when we've watched the tape, whether it's good or bad, it typically starts with what we do as, as a program more than what they do. And so uh, what a great opportunity to possibly have to win six here at home for our fans, for them to be able to be a part of it as we take the next step with our program. Um, so definitely something we have talked about from the standpoint it's here now, and it's here for our taking. Coach, uh, we're five and three. They're five. Penn State's five and three. The perception says you know Penn State's a favorite or whatever. Why is Maryland going to win this game in your eyes, or what has to be done to cross that barrier? Yeah, we don't talk a lot about winning. Uh, we talk about the process of winning, and so for us to have success on Saturday, it'll start with us doing things to the standard that we set. Um, it was great to get back to that last week uh, against Indiana. Uh, this is going to be a tough game. I mean, we expect it to be tough. Um, you know, they've had their way with us. If you look at the history of it, I do think that, you know, in the last few years, we've tried to do everything we can to be competitive. And, um, you know, last year, I think our team has a little confidence coming from last year in that, you know, we went up there and we beat a really good Penn State team. And, uh, you know, they went on after that game, and I think they righted the ship for their season and went on and had a great finish. And so, to me, we expect it to be a tough-ass game. We expect it to be one of those games where, you know, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes, the teams that has the most explosive plays will have an opportunity to win. And, you know, to me, we need to make it that kind of game. We've got to get it into the fourth quarter uh, of the game and, and give ourselves and put ourselves in position to, to, to come out with a win. Um, you talked about Brian Cox's role early in the season with some of these injuries in the receivers room. How, how has that perhaps grown and, and how important has he been, even if you know the stats on the field don't scream that he's yeah. as important as ironic you brought his name up because I actually brought B. Cobb in yesterday. And, you know, he's one of these senior guys and veteran players that we've uh, leaned on over the last few years with the leadership he brings. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to have a positive impact on your team. And unfortunately, how you guys grade it or judge it is typically via the stats and what they do in the game. And what I see is a guy that's become very unselfish in whatever role we've asked of him, he contributes. And I do and have challenged him. Part of the meeting yesterday was to challenge him to say, listen, you know, we're at that part of the climb where it becomes really treacherous. We're, we're sitting at five. We've got a lot of uh, great opportunities before us, starting with this one here this weekend. And, we need a guy like Brian Cobbs to kind of have a Carlos Carrier type moment, um, which to me is uh, something that we'll continue to challenge because we have talent. As I've tried to tell you guys, we're bigger than just the Dante Demises and Jay Sean Jones and that we've tried to create depth at most of the positions in our program that when we do have these injuries that other guys have the ability to step up. And, you know, we've seen that happen and I'd love to see it happen for Brian Cobbs this week against Penn State. You know, I know it's a personal situation his dad being a former Penn State player. I'd love for him to have that type of game this week and he'll practice and prepare to, to hopefully do that. Okay. Hey coach, kind of staying in the wide receiver room, obviously you saw Marcus Fleming <coughs> kind of got the, the boost to the to the starting role this week. What growth have you seen from him throughout the year that sort of has given you the confidence to put him in that role this week? Yeah, that's funny because I know you guys like to count players and starters, but he started last week. I don't know if you noticed the first play of the game he got the Flip sweep for minus two. So uh, he started last week. Carlos Carrier started last week. So this week, them being on the depth chart is just the fact that last week I kind of made some game time decisions. 
you guys want a depth chart on Tuesday. I got to get through Thursday's practice to see what we're doing, what things we're asking. And both those guys earned the right last week. You know, Daryl's been a little banged up. Um, and we also made the decision to start Carlos because of we needed a jump start. You'll see, you'll continue to see us figure out ways to improve us as much as we can throughout the season. We're not going to sit on our hands and, and just say, hey, it's status quo. We're always looking to see how we can motivate our team from within, how we can put the best players in a position to be able to have a chance to be successful. And both those things worked out well for us because I think I told you two weeks ago that we had a couple of receivers in Marcus Fleming and Dede McDougal who I would think you guys find out they're pretty good players, something that we already knew. And it's good to see Marcus take advantage of the opportunities. He continues to mature and grow in our program. And uh, he has a chance to be a special player. Um, and I'm glad to see him doing the things necessary to give him the opportunity. Whereas a guy like Carlos has kept his head down, continued to, to grind and plow through whatever things face him. And, and he was rewarded for his hard work uh, this weekend and how he was able to produce for us to help us win. Ryan, second one. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Hey, Ryan. Uh, my question is, uh, we saw last uh, last week Tayon Pete Davis get 64 receiving yards against Indiana. Just what, when he's catching the ball like that, how much does that, that, does that help the offense out? Well, I think the running backs in general, you know, as you look at our system, I, mean, I think the difference on us and us on offense was we had, I think, 96 gradable plays. Um, when you get that many plays, that means you're going to have many opportunities and many more touches. And, you know, Fleet's a guy that's very diverse uh, skill set in terms of running, receiving, blocking, catching, all those things. He plays on special teams. And so, um, you know, in our passing game, our running backs typically have a pretty good matchup like our tight ends do against linebackers and, and guys like that. And Fleet's one of those guys because of his skill set, it creates an advantage. And you know, I saw both he and Challen make some plays in the passing game. And uh, when the ball is distributed the way we distributed it last week, it really creates diversity on our offense and really allows us to get the ball in the hands of players in space. And uh, Fleet took advantage of that last week. Uh, yeah. Coach, I know a lot of teams around the country have gone back to practicing on election day today, and there's even some game, some game scheduled tonight in the back, I think. Um, is Do you have a sense that guys are still as engaged politically on the team as, as they were a year ago? And, and to talk to guys about you know the need to stay engaged in presidential years as well yeah no we're it's still front and center with our program we continue to do things within our program and within the athletic department to not let kind of the movement of last year kind of die down we'll continue to do it and even with us practicing today uh, you know we submitted a waiver to be able to practice today because you know obviously the elections aren't, effect, aren't affecting us here locally other than over in Virginia where we've educated our players about the ability to still to partake in, in, the, in that election. But before we made the decision to turn in the waiver, we turned to our leadership group. And I have a group of 16 guys that are part of my leadership council. And you know we were prepared to practice Sunday and use today as an off day. But once we met with them and I saw that different teams throughout the country had submitted these waivers, I asked them would they be interested in practicing on Sunday or Tuesday. And, you know, the day off after a game is really, really important, as I tried to talk about a few weeks back with us having those Friday games. And, and those guys agreed, you know, had we not had the support of the, the, the student athlete with doing this, we probably wouldn't have. Um, but I think they also understand that, you know, we're still uh, doing everything we can to provide a platform for them to take full advantage of rights that they have earned as uh, student athletes. What's the status of Jennings at linebacker and is 33 Banks going to make it back on the field this year? Status of Jennings. Jennings played last week. Uh, will continue to work himself back in. Uh, we played, I think, all four of the linebackers, maybe five last week in different situations. You know, when a freshman misses significant time like he missed and with it being a knee, time is uh, of the essence because we've got to we want him to be back to 100%. I think he's really close. Um, and we've continued to add more reps to him, and I also think you'll continue to see him uh, become more integral, play a more integral role uh, in, in our defensive game plan. And as I said earlier this year, Deontay Banks is done for the year. Yeah. Back. Yeah. back here, Coach. Uh, on Saturday and earlier, you, you talked about being concerned about the big plays that Indiana had in that game. <coughs> so, a little bit about what you saw uh, from that that you have to worry about. 
coming in up with Dotson, who you mentioned earlier in this game, and then you know having Jacorian back for that game and looking ahead at how he will be used in, against Penn State. Yeah, you always have the riddle questions. <laughs> Your questions are like riddles for me, and I like it. It gets, I have to challenge myself. But I think what you asked me was, you know, Indiana, I talked about the big play disparity. And, you know, for us, the, the winning formula for, for us is winning the turnover battle and winning the big play battle. And last week we had nine explosive plays and Indiana had eight. Uh, turnovers wise, we had one and I don't, they didn't have any. So we kind of balanced it out there and that we were still fortunate to be able to get a win. And, you know, some of the big plays we saw with Indiana obviously were, you know, the big play down at the end, uh, the 66 yard or however many yard run that was. Uh, you know, those type of plays are plays that we can't have against good teams like Penn State. And so what we've got to do is, again, when you put the tape on, it's not as if they schemed uh, Fry Fogel to be wide open like that. It was a blown coverage. It was a, us not being in the position that we needed to be in to make the play. And so we've got to get those things fixed uh, to limit the big plays. Obviously, Jahan Dotson is a big play threat, like some of the guys we've seen already from the Ohio States, the Iowa receivers, the Indiana receiver, Fry Fogel is one of our better receivers in our league. Uh, it's great to have uh, Jacorian Bennett back, as you saw on Saturday, did a really good job standing coverage. His coming back allows us to get back to maybe playing a little more man uh, than what we played with him being gone, because that now adds another piece to the puzzle where, you know, that's one of his strong skill sets. And, you know, as we always try to do, we try to play and do the things that our players allow us to do. And so, you know, Penn State has, you know, Parker Washington, they have Jahan Dotson, they've got the two tight ends, they've got the running back out of the backfield, and they got a really good quarterback that's really uh, progressed in their system. So it will be quite a challenge. Um, I still expect them to try to establish the run because we've shown uh, uh, inability the last few weeks to stop the run uh, and then set things up with play action shots where we've got to be do a good job of being in coverage uh, and playing uh, man coverage the way we can, we're capable of playing. Two more folks here, right? Ahmed and then uh, Ryan. Hey, Gooch. Um, I know last week you mentioned you kind of moved some guys around the outside linebacker room to kind of help with short that depth. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see um, you guys like Lopez Rogers and Damian um, uh, uh, Robinson, who kind of chance to make his first career start. Uh, what are you kind of seeing out of that room, guys kind of adjusting? And what have you seen uh, from a development standpoint uh, out of Damian Robinson so far this year? Yeah, I think the big thing is is you know we we moved guys around last week at the at the outside linebacker position by necessity. You know, with Deshaun Hope being sidelined with the uh, surgery last week, uh, we're getting thin on bodies and you know losing Darrell Chami uh, a week prior. So uh, Damian was thrown into a starting position there and did really really well. I thought he set the edge for us the way we needed to be to be done. He affected the quarterback with good pass rush. Not necessarily getting a finished sack, but creating um, a little uncomfortableness for that quarterback in the pocket. Lautez Rogers has continued to be a steady force, an older player that has shown great leadership, and we'll continue to lean on him and that leadership as well. Ryan. Hey, Coach. Hey, Ryan. Um, just going back on like injuries, just want to get an update on how freshman uh, Terrence Lewis is, is recovering. Yeah, Terrence has made his way back. Uh, he's actually doing some things on the field. Um, limited things, you know, you have a couple of shoulders and the knee all fixed and clean, but we're starting to see him progress to where he's out. Uh, he came running out. I saw a guy in the number zero and I was trying to figure out who that was and I walked over the stretch line that was tearing. So it's great to have him back out on the field with us. You know, it's really tough when you deal with the type of injuries he has because you don't necessarily feel part of it. And so as he's kind of progressed, you know, he's working himself back into where he's participating in limited parts of practice. Still has some ways to go in terms of the full recovery piece of it, but uh, it's just great to see him back out there with us. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.